I'm here in Killian Court at MIT. 20 years ago, across the street at Kresge Auditorium, I attended an event held by MIT on investigating the mind that brought together Buddhist monks and cognitive scientists to explore what can be learned at the intersection of these two traditions. It's the same place that 33 years earlier staged major anti-war protest events at the height of the Vietnam War. Events that, among many students, also included MIT faculty like Noam Chomsky and Joseph Weizenbaum. Out of the Investigating the Mind Dialogue in 2003, I felt deeply inspired and moved by the clarity of the scientific investigation between science and consciousness. While at the same time, I also felt that something really important was missing. When walking back across campus, I suddenly had this moment of complete clarity about what to do with the rest of my life, which is to extend the investigation between science and consciousness that I just witnessed towards exploring the full triangle between science, spirituality, and profound social change. This resulted in founding a Cambridge-based circle that I co-convened with my colleagues Peter Senge and Arthur Zayans that brought together people regularly in conversations around exploring the triangle and its interconnections. Inspired by these conversations, just a few years later, we decided to found the Presencing Institute. The founding impulse of the Presencing Institute is something very simple, which is to integrate all three dimensions of the triangle and the different lineages connected with that, which are, number one, action science and organizational learning. Number two, consciousness, particularly the interface between consciousness and science. And number three, civic engagement or planetary movement building. The action science stream has a long tradition here at MIT beginning with Kurt Lewin in the 1940s, who is widely known as the founder of action science and whose experiments in organizations and social change gave rise to the entire field of action research and organizational development. Lewin's ideas were picked up here at MIT and developed further by Ed Schein, who became one of my main mentors here when I arrived at MIT. Ed pioneered new models of action learning and helping, one that puts the learner into the driver's seat of change and the educator into the role of the coach. Sometimes later, Donella Meadows and Peter Senge joined the System Dynamics Group at MIT. Donella Meadows became the lead author of Limits to Growth, which subsequently helped to spark the global environmental movement. Meanwhile, Peter Senge became interested in how to link the conceptual frames of systems thinking with real-world change. In 1990, he published another best-selling book, The Fifth Discipline, The Art and Practice of Learning Organizations. That book launched the topic of organizational learning practices in the boardrooms and companies and organizations worldwide. It was that lineage and tradition that drew me to MIT and that gave rise to what now is known as Theory U. The second stream is rooted in the lineage of wisdom traditions around the world, including Eastern epistemologies, indigenous knowledge systems, and an exploration of the intersection between science and consciousness. Examples here are the work of Francesco Varela and Eleanor Roche, whose explorations of cognition and neuroscience have been foundational to the development of the original Theory U framework. This thread continues to evolve in various partnerships, for example, with my colleague Milani Goodchild, who blends traditional Anishinaabe knowledge with systems thinking. The third stream, civic engagement and planetary movement building, is grounded in countless initiatives and actions across the planet, including some of my own experiences as a young person in Germany participating in the environmental, the anti-nuke, and the peace movement of the 1970s and the 1980s. This dream is rooted in all the spaces where citizens come together to co-shape the evolution of society. 
including their movements around decolonization, racial justice, women's rights, civil rights, environmental justice, and climate change. When we co-founded the Presencing Institute, the idea was simply that to address the challenges that are coming our way in this century, we need to integrate all three of these streams into a new body of methods and practice that evolves around learning from the emerging future rather than just reflecting on the experiences of the past. 20 years later, when I look back at all of this now, what, if anything, has changed? One, 20 years ago, when you try to talk to people uh, about profound change, uh, the concepts of theory U, it was almost as if you needed to translate and explain like an alien language. Today, that's totally different. Today, you no longer need to explain why profound change is necessary. Or everyone already knows that and experiencing that. The only question today is how we are going to go about it. And the second change is the concept of integrating the three streams, that we need a body of practices that integrates the three streams that I was mentioning before. And that idea, that concept was a far out idea 20 years ago. Today, it's much more accepted. Not only accepted, it's already well underway in many places. For example, when you look at the use of mindfulness in education, in health, in management, in leadership. All of these examples are very inspiring. Yet, if you double click on them, you often see they also can be a little bit limited because the power of mindfulness usually is applied to the cultivation of the individual. Very important foundation. But what's often missing is the transformation of the system, the transformation of the collective. And that's really what the key focus is of Theory U, to expand the power of mindfulness, to expand the power of awareness, by also focusing on the transformation of the collective, on the evolution of the whole system. And that's what U Lab is an invitation for, for you to explore and to apply it to your own context.